Yes, question. I'm so sorry. I did not realize that uh, the chat was disabled. But thankfully, Q&A is open. I thought I left chat open, but um, all right. Well, we'll just get started. So hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me and the CMA for this session on how to craft a successful funding application for Young Canada Works in Heritage Organizations and Young Canada Works at Building Careers in Heritage. So my name is Louise and I am a program officer with the Building Careers in Heritage stream as well as the Young Canada Works Communications Liaison uh, for the CMA. So today we're gonna to review some key points to keep in mind while you're preparing to submit an application for Young Canada Works funding for the coming year, for, so for 2024 to 2025. So I'll provide an overview of the benefits of Young Canada Works for your organization, how to create a successful funding application and what to expect once you've submitted. Um, and just before we dive in, um, I just will do a quick land acknowledgement um, the CMA acknowledges that its secretariat here in Ottawa is located on the traditional territory of the Algonquin and the Anishinaabe Bawaki peoples, and we extend our appreciation for the opportunity to live and learn on this territory in mutual respect and gratitude. Um, and of course, we are across the entire uh, nation of Canada, so that encompasses many nations. Um, so the general goal today is to provide you with a overview of the application process and to provide you with information to allow you to create a high scoring and competitive YCW funding application for either stream. And just as a reminder, the deadline for the coming year to submit an application online is um, next Friday. So it's January 19th. So what exactly is Young Canada Works? So in short, uh, YCW is a federal funding program that is offered through the Department of Canadian Heritage that insists, assists employers in the heritage sector to hire short-term employees. So successful applicants receive funding to cover a certain percentage of the costs of salary and other costs associated with hiring a Canadian youth aged 30 and under for a limited term contract and the positions last between six weeks and 12 months in total. So every year, uh, Canadian Heritage sets a maximum dollar amount and a percentage of funding allowed for each stream. So for 2024, uh, for Young Canada Works and Heritage organizations, employers can receive up to 75% of eligible employment costs, so salary and mandatory employer costs, or up to $10,000 per position. So if you apply for three positions, it would be $10,000 for each position, for instance. In Building Careers and Heritage, employers um, can also receive up to 75%, um, up to a maximum of $15,000 per position. And there is also available to um, international internships, which uh, fund up to $17,000 per position. Um, and in addition, there is also a potential reimbursement for any accessibility needs for your intern or student, and that is up to $3,000 per participant for any reasonable costs uh, related to any job accommodation requirements. Um, so the benefits of the program include an opportunity to bring a fresh perspective to your organization, to complete, start, or continue a project, to provide short-term employment for a Canadian youth, and to help develop and strengthen the student or intern's um, heritage sector skills. And that one is a key, a key component of the program. Um, so the Canadian Museums Association administers uh, YCW on behalf of the federal government, on behalf of Canadian Heritage, um, that funds work experiences in museums and other cultural heritage organizations. And it's quite uh, broadly defined, so it includes um, heritage societies, university departments, art galleries, artist-run centers, etc. Um, so YCW is an important investment in the future of Canada's museums and cultural sector, creating professional development opportunities for young Canadians who have interests in the heritage sector. So just a quick overview of the differences between the two streams. Um, so when you're planning your project and crafting the application, you'll want to determine first, one of the first questions is which stream. Um, so you wanna determine which one best suits your project and your organization, as well as your timeline. So YCW in heritage organizations and YCW at Building Careers in Heritage vary not only in the length of the work term, but also in 
the scope and the type of projects that you would uh, undertake. So I'll just provide a quick overview of each of them and go over the similarities. So Young Canada Works and Heritage Organizations funds short-term job placements for current students, and that's between six weeks and 16 weeks in length. So the successful uh, youth applicants must be enrolled in secondary or post-secondary education. Um, and so there's a change for the coming year that they no longer have to be coming directly from school and planning to return to school. They just need to be registered as a student in a program. And also another recent change is that um, YCWHO used to be only a summertime program because that's when students tended to be available, um, but it is now available any time of year. So you can have a position start in the summer. You can have a position start even in January, the fall, literally any any time of year, as long as it meets the, the minimum length requirement. And they must end by March 31st. And Young Canada Works at Building Careers and Heritage funds internships of four months to 12 months, although it's never, it's rarely, rarely ever a full 12 months, unfortunately. Um, and this stream is for college or university graduates. So there are age limits for um, both streams. They're both for people 30 years old and younger. The candidates must be Canadian citizens, a permanent resident, or have refugee status. Um, BCH interns must have graduated from a post-secondary uh, program, and that can include um, their CEJAP, a certificate, a diploma, or a degree. And we have lots of, lots of our interns have master's degrees already, and some have PhDs. They vary quite widely. Um, and there's a lot of overlap between the two streams in terms of what the tasks involve and the eligibility criteria. Um, but in general, Young Canada Works in heritage organizations are typically more of a basic skill building opportunity and they introduce people to the heritage sector and the jobs involved. Um, and they don't expect that the person who's um, the employee will have a lot of experience. PCH interns, on the other hand, are more likely to have had some experience um, and, of course, some education in things related to the museum field. So the specific objectives of each are slightly different, and you'll want to consider these objectives, um, which are found in the employer's guide uh, when selecting the stream. So the specific objectives of a Young Canada Works and Heritage Organizations are that it helps youth find short-term employment in order to acquire knowledge and skills needed to work in the heritage sector, to increase their employability, to provide them with opportunities to network with heritage sector professionals, to increase their knowledge and appreciation of significant local and national achievements, to encourage them to consider arts or cultural sector uh, work after the internship, or to encourage them to pursue further postgraduate studies. So why is the CMA involved and what exactly do we do? Um, so the CMA has been delivering the Young Canada Works program since YCW started in 1996. Um, we're one of a number of delivery organizations. And when you go to do your application, you will select one of them. Um, and there's a lot of overlap and it's not really, it's not a crucial decision. Um, we do have archives positions, we have library positions. So there's some overlap, it just depends which suits you better. Um, so the other delivery organizations you can choose from are the Fédération des Milieux Documentaires, the Canadian Council of Archives, the Cultural Human Resources Council, and the National Trust. So you can apply through any of those on the, web, on the YCW website. And it depends on the, the nature of your project or your organization. Um, so for us as a delivery organization, our role is to review applications. We issue funding offers. We approve selected candidates. We approve budgets. And we just guide you as the employer from the first step, which is submitting your application to the final payment that you receive once the um, position has ended. So our role um, at the CMA is to support employers and uh, to help them navigate Young Canada Works from the beginning to the end. And we're always very happy to help. If you have any questions during the process or about candidates, we're always happy to, uh, to answer. So we review and we screen the applications. Uh, we determine if a project 
or the institution is eligible. Um, in order to be an eligible employer, you must be an incorporated nonprofit Canadian organization with a heritage mandate. You must also be accessible to the public, either virtually or in person. Um, in addition to us reviewing the uh, applications, we also create a team of peer reviewers who also review the applications for quality. And at the end, there is a score given. So ones, of course, with a higher score, more likely to be funded and will be funded earlier. Um, so funding is based on both our screening role as well as the peer review committee's um, reviews. So how to apply. Um, so if you've identified a project and worked out the details and the specifics, so you want to determine which stream and then which delivery organization your position is best suited to, and you can apply to multiple delivery organizations, just not for the same position. So if you have one that's better suited to archives or one that's better suited to built heritage, you can apply to National Trust and us as long as they're not the same position. Um, so just before you go to the website and put everything into the application online, you'll want to map it out first. Um, after you'll probably want to review the application online, but we just recommend that you do it outside of the website because the website can sometimes um, log you out without you having been able to save. It's just not uh, it's not the most stable in terms of letting you know when it's going to log you out. Um, so let's just go to the next one where it has, I think, a little bit more details about how to sign up. Um, so if your organization already has a profile on the YCW website, you don't need to create a new one. It's much easier if you just use the old one and you can make updates to the, who the contact person is, et cetera. Um, and you just go, it's easy to create a profile though, if you do need to, but if you already have one, please continue with that one. Um, so you just wanna go to create a job funding application. So under job details, so you'll see that here, um, there are nine subsections. So you have project and job objectives, measurable outcomes, description of tasks, uh, work plan, employability skills to be gained, candidate profile, orientation and training, supervision and post project. Um, so you'll want to give detailed and thoughtful responses to each section and be as specific as possible. So plan out your priorities beforehand, determine what you want to achieve with your project and how you're going to measure success for your intern or student. So uh, now we'll just go to some specific sections and offer some more specific advice. Sorry. Um, so for your, Yeah, sorry, for the project and job objective section, you'll want to highlight what makes your project as well as your organization stand out. So tell us what makes this an, a unique opportunity and how it will benefit the organization, the potential employee, and the larger community that you serve. Um, so just make sure you're addressing the question, why is this project valuable? Why should it be funded? and be specific about this. So tell us the background of the project. So don't just say accessioning items um, or creating or updating exhibit um, exhibitions. So why is this important to be doing this now? Will the intern have a an opportunity to develop their own exhibition? Um, or what, what, what role will the student's uh, work play in the organization generally? So you'll want to just provide a lot of specific detail about, um, about the project because that's one of the things that peer reviewers mention most frequently is that people will just sort of write a very generic phrase um, and they don't provide details. So projects for building careers and heritage positions should involve the intern in developing, um, developing projects to some degree and give them a little bit of responsibility. Projects for um, YCW and heritage organizations should help them develop more basic skills um, but the skills developed should be specific to the heritage sector. So try to stay away from um, maintenance roles or like cashier types of roles. Like, so if it's gift shop, like don't it, their whole role shouldn't just be like cashier in the gift shop. Um, it should be varied and, and provide some specific heritage related skills.
And next is the measurable outcome section, which is a key section, again, that a lot of people are a little bit too vague um, about in their applications. So this section asks you to indicate the measurable outcomes of the project, describe how you expect to meet your goals and how you will measure the success of this position. So you'll want to avoid words like many or more, as in many items accessioned or um, more visitors. Um, you want to have a sense of how the success or progress will be measured. Is it the number of items to be cataloged or accessioned? Um, is there a specific percentage you would like your education, um, enrollment and education programs to, to raise or a specific increase in donations or visitors? Um, so there should be a specific goal set out. Um, and having sense of of this, of how, to, how your project uh, goals will be measured, will help you also in the section on your project timeline where you're going to set out milestones for your project. So onto the timeline. So under job details, um, you're asked to create a work plan which will include tasks, but also a detailed timeline. Um, so in this section, you can refer to your measurable outcomes by setting milestones or specific deadlines. This will help you if you're planning, but also indicate that you've given um, some consideration to how you and the intern or student are going to be measuring progress. Provide a schedule with realistic estimates of how long tasks will take. Uh, the timeline should include any training that you plan to provide to the student or intern, as well as their orientation to your organization. So you can indicate um, any specific events that will be taking place that are part of your timeline. For instance, is there a launch or a seasonal opening or an exhibition closing or opening or any other deadlines that will affect uh, the intern or student's work? So as with all of the sections, um, you'll want to provide as many specific details as possible. And it doesn't need to be a day-by-day -day plan. It's not specific in that sense, just specific in the sense of... Uh, progress goals and deadlines, et cetera. And also you'll want to show in some fashion that you are aware of the goals of the Young Canada Works program uh, when you're drafting the application. So you'll want to make it clear um, that uh, your job aligns, your planned job aligns with at least one of our program goals. And the goals are one, to improve knowledge, skills, and practice in the heritage field, to preserve heritage for current and future generations, and to help the public access Canadian heritage. And candidate selection. Um, so beyond just the, the basic YCW eligibility criteria, you'll want to identify what qualities or experiences you want your candidate to have. So there's a section in the application on candidate profile where you make some um, specific requests about what you expect or need uh, from a candidate. So do you have, for instance, any specific language requirements? Um, do they need to have a certain conservation skill? Do they need to have a particular background in a certain history or knowledge of a certain subject? Um, or if it's an, interpret an, an interpretation position, um, do they have to have a willingness to perform or speak in front of the public, especially if it's an education position as well? Um, so positions should be tailored to the amount of experience that you're expecting from your uh, intern or student. So you'll want to be clear about these expectations when you write the job poster, which is at the end of the application. Um, and you're also going to be explaining how you will be conducting recruitment for this position. So we encourage, uh, we encourage you to consider um, promoting the position to underserved communities and those who might not be in your regular context. So people who are outside of your regular um, supporters of your organization, outside of your regular uh, social media, although it's obviously great to, to post to them and, and on your social media, um, but you'll want to make sure that you're posting the position. It goes on our website, of course, um, where everyone can see it, but um, you'll want to be sure that you are promoting it as widely as possible. Um, and open recruitment for positions is very important uh, to the whole process. And it's a question that we ask when you select your candidate. Um, so it shouldn't be someone, for instance, who has worked at your organization previously, ideally. Um, and you just want to make sure that the position is, 
is available and uh, as many eligible youth are aware of it as possible. So just a quick overview of the timeline um, for Young Canada Works and how this might affect your application um, or your plans, I should say. So you'll want to have a realistic start date in mind. So we have um, a firm end date for all of the Young Canada Works positions is March 31st because of the government fiscal year. So all positions have to end by then. Um, they can all start any time of year. They just have to make sure that they can meet the minimum length requirement. So for building careers and heritage, in order to be 16 weeks or longer, it has to start by December. Um, and the same thing with HO, but that they could start into January, February, literally any time of year. Um, however, the start date can be a little bit more tricky. A lot of people want them to start in May, um, and unfortunately, they can't. They can't all start in May just because of how the funding cycle works. Um, so applications open on the website in November of the previous year, and then the the um, the deadline is January. So this year it's January nineteenth, and then it takes a couple of months for us to review, score, and communicate out decisions, and then for people to respond. So because of our funding cycle, we have two funding envelopes. Typically, uh, we have core funding as well as supplemental. So the higher scoring applications are funded through core. So they are typically funded earlier. Um, and then so um, if, you're, if your application doesn't score as highly, it will be funded later, either through supplementary or as we go through our wait list. Um, so not not all positions can start right in May. Um, some start in June, July, August, September. Um, but if you do have a hard opening deadline, then um, then express express that in the application, and uh, we can keep that in mind. So for the budget, uh, the budget can seem overwhelming sometimes if you're not into um, payroll and other sort of accounting procedures. Um, it doesn't have to be. We're always here to help as well if you have any questions on it. Um, but before you submit your application, you'll want to sit down and think about um, the budget. So considering the percentage that YCW can contribute as well as the percentage uh, that your organization will have to contribute. And you are allowed to have funding from other sources. It just can't equal more than 100% of the total. Um, so we can contribute up to 75%, for instance, of wages and mandatory employer costs, So, which means um, the organization will be responsible for funding the remainder, um, as well as any sort of additional costs. And there are many other line items, and we'll just get into that um, in a moment, just so that uh, the other line items are usually not cash contributions, they're usually in kind, so it represents or reflects a uh, thought you've given to um, the sort of skill development and professional development and all of the other uh, aspects that will come into play. Um, so the budgets between HO and BCH are quite different. Budget sections uh, for the budget section for the Building Careers and Heritage Internship is a lot more complicated and asks a lot more detail than the uh, Heritage Organization's position budget. The, uh, so we ask for building careers and heritage. We ask you to consider professional development activity costs, any um, expense for searching for a candidate, any post-internship uh, professional development costs, or any other sort of equipment you might need, um, networking opportunities. And these can also be in-kind uh, costs. They don't necessarily have to be cash contributions. Um, so we just mainly want to see that you've given some thought uh, to how this experience will benefit your your intern or your student in the long term by providing them with something beyond the wage and just given thought to planning out your budget. And also you'll want to keep, um, keep the wage high. Uh, we find that helps people with their um, candidate attraction. So um, if you have a lower wage, you might be less likely, unfortunately, to find a candidate and then the position might have to be canceled. We do have a wage guide that is available on the Canadian Museums Association website um, that is helpful for determining a fair wage for 
the intern or student in your region, depending on where you are and uh, what the type of job is. So for supervision, um, Young Canada Works students and interns both require dedicated mentorship and supervision in order to develop these um, professional heritage sector skills. So you'll want to tell us who will be responsible uh, for supervision and mentorship um, and what the proposed process is. And if it's multiple people, that is also fine. It's actually, it's great if they have exposure to different people and, and other people will be helping with this process and are available to them. Um, but you'll want to outline, for instance, how frequently you will be meeting um, as supervisor with the intern or student? Will they be involved in wider team meetings? Will they be working with others um, just in general? So what their, how their progress will be evaluated and what, what the process of supervision will look like. So you'll essentially want to show us that you've put some thought into a detailed supervision plan and demonstrate that you've uh, prioritized giving the student or intern a great experience. Um, and this, again, relates to the experience and the mentorship issue. So you'll want to describe how you're going to help your employee in their professional development. So Young Canada Works program is designed to help young people develop skills and give them experience that they will need to join the heritage profession. So we want to know that your project will give them tools um, that they require to become future colleagues of the Canadian Museum community. So you'll want to consider, for instance, if there's any local associations that your student or intern can join, will there be networking opportunities um, or other mentoring opportunities? Uh, will there be any online or in-person courses, for instance, through a um, per, uh, provincial museum association that they can take that will help develop skills that they'll use on their in their job? Um, and consider any costs or other resources that you might be putting towards this and reflect them in your budget. And so you'll want also to explain your job equity strategy, include your organization's job equity statement in the job poster, which is the final piece of the application. So Young Canada Works is a uh, federal government program, so we take job equity quite seriously, and including a job equity statement helps show students or interns um, that they're all welcome to apply for this position and join your organization. So it can be quite um Quite brief and simple, it can be we are an equal opportunity employer, encourage applications from all qualified candidates, or you can make it as detailed and specific as you would like. So in the recruitment section of the application, which we uh, reviewed earlier, you'll want to explain how you're going to be um, sure that you reach all eligible candidates. And you'll want to connect job equity with the recruitment strategy to ensure you're reaching everyone. <laughs> And then just a quick note, uh, which was mentioned earlier, we recommend writing the application out first outside of the YCW website before putting it in. You want to have it so you can almost copy and paste it right in after it's all been planned out. So that is all of my content that I have. I just have some resources that you can find on our website. For instance, the wage guide you can find at museums.ca, as well as other resources for employers or potential employers. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at ycw at museums.ca. And then just a quick, um, quick overview. So these Jobs are meant for people who are new to the sector. Don't set the bar too high. Um, provide as much detail as possible. Um, that's one of the main comments that our peer reviewers and we also, um, when we do our screening, that we find is that some people don't don't provide a lot of detail. Um, so it's hard it's hard to know what exactly the job will involve in that case. Um, and again, just be very specific in in what the position involves. And just to recap again, so you're um, you're appealing to people who are new to the sector. Typically, you want to define how your job um, and your organization is different and how it's going to be a good experience. You'll want to have a good budget thought out. Um, make sure it meets the YCW goals. You have measurable outcomes. Um, have a comprehensive timeline. Again, lots of details. Provide professional development opportunities a job equity strategy and and then again with the please write it out beforehand and that is everything that i have
to say. So I would love to take questions. I, I see there's lots in the Q&A, so let's see. Um, oh, I see someone um, asked about the French. I'm not sure if you were able to find the uh, translation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, yes, I can definitely provide you with that, I believe. I'm just looking for a question. Information about dollars available for accessibility. Uh, could you review that again? Um, yes. So for accessibility question, so it's up to $3,000. So once you've hired someone, or you're considering hiring someone, you can, um, you let us know if there are any accessibility needs and what the costs would be and we would evaluate. It can essentially be um, almost anything that will help the uh, intern or student with accomplishing the work goals. So um, even childcare would count under that and anything that helps them be able to do the, the role that you have asked of them. And it's just once you've, once you've hired, or you have a sense of you are about to hire somebody, um, just let us know and submit the amounts and the, just let us know about the issue in general. And um, then we would start start that. Um, sorry, I'm just reading the next one. Um, so one of the questions is, can we apply and request 75% funding by YCW or is the chance bigger to get funding when asking for just 50? I would say that you should ask for what you what you need. So if you if you need seventy five percent funding, I would request that. It depends on the stream as well. I know um, HO I believe tends to fund more jobs at a lower percentage, whereas BCH funds fewer jobs at a higher percentage. Um, but it's up to really once we get if we accept the the position or the application, I should say, we um, we would send you a budget um, for you to review and then you can approve it. So it's hard to say, like if, if you need 75%, if that's your optimum amount, um, then I would, I would submit an application for 75%. It is up to 75%. So there's no harm at all in requesting 75% funding. It's just not guaranteed. I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, so the next question at the beginning, you mentioned, um, some money that could be used for accessibility accommodations. Would we be able to apply for that on an as needed basis when a candidate is selected? Yes. So it's once you've selected a candidate, then you can contact us and let us know about this and we will take it from there. Um, do you need specific names for the supervisors or a volunteer board and have three to four directors who will be supervising? That would be that would be good. Yes, um, we a, a specific name would be preferred, um, or the role that the person is in, um, but a specific name, and a bit about the person and their role with the organization would be would would be the best um, to submit. And someone's asked if we have an application preview document. We don't really. It's just it's available on the website, so you can you can access the the um the application anytime, and you don't have to you don't have to continue it. You can access it, and then leave, um, and it's fine. So you you can just view it anytime on on the website. Um, sorry, just reading the next one. Are there any recommendations as far as numbers of hours per week? That's a very good question. Um, there aren't, except, so we do allow part-time now for both. Um, so part-time, as long as you have a, a rationale um, for why it would only be part-time, it depends. It depends on the number of hours you're requesting as well. So it should be, you know, a certain number of hours. Uh, so not like if you're doing it 10 hours, 10 hours a week, for instance, for a six week program, um, say if you're in the HO stream, um, that might not 
that might not be as beneficial. But if you have a reason why you only want part-time, um, let us know. But the part-time is definitely allowed. Um, but as for any other, like 30 hours, 32 hours, 40 hours, it's entirely up to you. Um, but part-time is allowed, just um, to let you know. But um, it should be. There should be a, like, it, it shouldn't be a, a very, very low number of hours. So if it's like three hours a week, that might be unusual. Um, we, that might, that might not score well with the peer reviewers. Um, are the questions uh, on the application different from last year? I believe they are the same. Some of the eligibility criteria have changed, but the the questions, as far as I'm aware, are the same as they were last year. Oops, sorry, just keeping uh, scrolling down. Um, so this person has asked, I know you have additional funding sources to support, or you can have additional funding sources to support a YCW job, but since the start date is flexible, can the student be employed through one grant program followed by YCW? That is also a good question. Um, it would depend, or is it consecutive? If it's consecutive, um, then I think you could count it as as one full work term, and it, we wouldn't really know which one was which. But it's it, it's mostly intended to be um, letting us know for the period in which you are funded by Young Canada Works, are you receiving additional funding? Um, but if the person is employed by a different funding opportunity for two weeks and then has six weeks of YCW, um, that might be fine. But the if it was like a month apart, then no, but it's mo it's mainly um, to be understood as during the YCW work term. So if you've requested 16 weeks, but the person started two weeks earlier, then it would be an 18 week work term, if that makes sense. Um, so it's not, it can't be a completely different work term in order to be used. So it should be within the same work term. Um, Sorry, next question. You mentioned earlier um, that applicant eligibility were more widely interpreted and allowed for applicants that are not only museums. Can you clarify that? Um, so you just have to have, so the eligibility criteria for Young Canada Works is that you have a heritage mandate, that you are nonprofit, and that you are available to the public. So as long as you meet those criteria, you would be eligible. So anything with a heritage mandate, essentially, um, would work. Um, so like a heritage society, a friends of such and such society um, would work. You just can't also, you can't be affiliated with a federal department. So you can't be a D and D run museum, for instance. Um, but if you have, do you have a specific question about what would be eligible um, outside of museums? It is fairly broad. So um, art galleries, um, storytelling centers, uh, a lot of um, Indigenous organizations, cultural organizations, um, as I mentioned, university departments that are working on a particular project that is open to the public, that sort of thing. Um, it's fairly wide. So a uh, next question, sorry, how do you get a draft copy of the YCW application? to do before submitting it. Um, so it would just be on the website. So you would log into your your profile and then when you select job funding application, you can see uh, the questions that would be asked. And will these slides be available after the presentation? Um, yes, I can send those. And I'm so sorry, I'm just reading another question. With the shift in student status requirement for YCWHO, what now counts as a registered student, registered for the fall? Um, no, they just have to be, it doesn't have to be a specific semester. So if they are currently registered in a university program or a high school program, as long as they are registered in a program, it doesn't matter um, which semester. So if they are currently pursuing an undergraduate degree, they would they would be eligible essentially. So they don't have to be in a particular semester. 
So like, for instance, I, I'm doing a program where you take one class at a time. Um, and part-time is, is also allowed. Um, and I don't take a class every semester, but I'm registered in the program and I can register whenever I want. So that, that for instance, um, would work. So they can be taking two semesters off. They can essentially just be, have the ability to be going back to their program at some point or completing their program as well. Um, so it can be the final semester. Some people use the um, YCW work terms as a um, as the work terms that are required by their particular degree program as a co-op term, for instance. Um, and that is that is also fine. And then the next question: Would travel also be included if we want to hire someone who had to commute? Unfortunately, no. So it is only one hundred and twenty-five kilometers away from the workplace, so from their permanent address to the workplace, um, if that trip is 125 kilometers or more, then it would be covered. But um, unfortunately, a daily commute is not allowed, not allowed to be covered by us. So we wouldn't be able to, unfortunately. Um, relocation costs are not, aside from um, so someone asked, did you mention relocation costs are covered? It's tra travel. So travel by, uh, you can rent a, rent a car, bus, train, airplane, et cetera. Um, online or sorry, on route uh, accommodations can be covered, but not, um, so like not, not renting a trailer, that sort of thing. It's just your actual physical travel. And if you need accommodation, so if you're traveling a certain distance, um, then you can also have, like, if you need to stay in a motel or a hotel, um, that would be covered as well. Um, sorry, just reading the next one. Should the international program intern be a permanent resident citizen of Canada as well? Yes. So the um, eligibility criteria for the international museology internship is the same so the um the intern hired is has to be the same uh, as a regular building careers and heritage intern so they have to be 30 years or under canadian citizen permanent resident or have refugee status um and have graduated from a post secondary uh program so yes they do have to be the same the same eligibility criteria is there flexibility on the project timeline based on when the budget is allocated? Um, so if you want the start date to be May, but you don't receive funding um, or fund only funding to cover six months instead of 12, can you change? Yes, definitely. Can you change the start or end date of the position? Yes, it's very flexible. So if you submit an application for like May 1st and we don't offer you funding until July, um, you can change the start date. You can change the end date. Um, so that's all part of the process. When we issue a funding offer, we will ask you, uh, we'll present you a budget. We'll ask you to confirm the start date and the end date um, and, and to confirm other details. And then we'll create a budget and send it to you for your approval. And then once you approve it, that's when, that's when you would, um, you would have the job posted on the website and we would, you can start to hire someone. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, it's very flexible. Um, are positions that include operational aspects, interpretive programming, more likely to be funded if they include specific work in addition to interpretation? No, not at all. So interpretation is a perfectly um, like more than more than acceptable uh, task to be involved in. Um, a lot of roles are are purely interpretive, and that is that is fine. Um, but I mean, you certainly can involve um, the intern or student in in tasks beyond that. Um, but no interpretation by itself, um, if it's a living history museum or whatever, <laughs> uh, that is that is fine. It's just more tasks that are not specific to heritage. So if it's just like um, mowing the lawn, for instance, or et cetera, something that won't build heritage skills. I mean, you can have mowing the lawn as part of the tasks, but it can't be the task. Um, is there a membership fee for the CMA before applying? No, you do not need to be a member of any of the delivery organizations in order to apply through them. That's completely separate from from CMA membership or any of the other delivery organization memberships. 
And sorry, is it possible to advertise the job positions prior to hearing if the grant application is successful? So we have full funding for positions from our municipality, uh, but are looking for supplementary funding to assist with a more sustainable model. Um, that's an interesting question. So you can advertise. So if this would be one of the ones where you are combining funding, um, it would, it, yes, uh, you can. I mean, there's no, again, there's no guarantee that you will get funding. Um, so that's the only risk is if you hire someone and then don't get funding and then can't continue to employ them, that would be an issue. But yes, you can you can certainly like promote, it won't be on the YCW website and they can't officially apply until on the YCW website until um, we have issued a funding offer. Um, does requesting multiple positions hinder an application? No, it does not. You are There's no limit on the number of applications or positions you can apply for. You could apply for five of the same position. You can apply for five different positions. You can apply for five from all of the delivery organizations, as long as they're not the same application. So there's not really any, it does not reflect badly on your application unless you ask for like something that does not seem realistic, like 20, um, as long as it's justified in the application why you need four of the same position. Um, and they would all be treated separately. So if you applied for four separate positions, they would all be evaluated completely separately. Um, if an organization has previously received um, HO funding for a specific position and want to get funding again for the same specific position, is it preferable to add something new somewhere in the current application? I mean, that would depend entirely. Um, the people who review it won't necessarily know that it is the same position. Um, if the same tasks and all of the, the information is the same, then there's no, there's not really any issue with submitting the same application unless there are changes. Um, if you have the wrong year, I mean, I would I would proofread it just to make sure nothing stands out as being a reused application. Um, but if it, if it still suits the job, then absolutely. Um, if everything is still relevant, definitely you can reuse the same application. What is briefing and debriefing in the application under detail costs? So that one is a tricky one because it does seem to overlap with... Um, uh, with some of the other job lines. So, I mean, you can definitely skip that one, but it is mostly sort of the onboarding and then um, when they leave. So um, like an exit interview, I guess, just sort of talking with them to see what they want to do. Um, it's just sort of the time involved in in that one. So that one is sort of, it's not, it's actually not used that often. So you, you can skip it, um, but it is mostly just sort of, because we have the orientation and supervision, which accounts for orientation time and efforts. Um, so briefing and debriefing is mainly just sort of um, anything outside of orientation. And then afterwards sort of giving um, assistance and non-onboarding them, deboarding, not sure what that's referred to as. Would the in-kind contribution from the employer uh, counted in the budget or would it be considered separately? Uh, it does count in the budget, yeah. So it's, it counts, in-kind contributions count uh, as part of the total costs. So when we say we'll fund up to 50% of total costs, the total costs include the in-kind contributions as well. Um, so what qualifies as an in-kind contribution, especially regarding things like equipment the employee would be using on site? Um, so in-kind would be anything that you already have. Um, so for instance, if you already have space, um, there is a line for office space, for instance. So that would be an in-kind contribution. Um, if your supervisor is already working there, we do include it under cash for some strange reason, uh, but that, that would be counted. You don't actually pay that separately. Um, but anything in kind would be something that you already have or in terms of resources that are not uh, a cash resource. So for instance, um, any of your like physical, <laughs> physical assets that they would be using time of other people who work in the organization, um, anything of that sort, that's not an outright expense to you would be considered in kind. Um, does it have to be set days and hours? If we request 35 hours a week, can we get someone to work eight hours one day and six another? Yes, yeah, so you can do uh, essentially how, however you want to schedule them is fine. Um, can you explain what a peer review is? So a peer review is a person who is 
um, there's a, a person who is a current museum um, employee um, anywhere in Canada. So they we send out requests for people who want to volunteer as a peer reviewer. The peer reviewers get a certain number of applications to review and they review them for us uh, as volunteers and they score them with a score sheet that we provide them. So they provide scores for submitted applications for Young Canada Works funding. So they are really uh, what determine who gets funded and, and who doesn't or which applications get funded and which might not get funded. So they provide a score, which we then review as well and um, incorporate these scores into our decision-making process. Um, so if we are applying for more than one student under HO, is the limit 10,000 for each student or for both? So it is for each. So each position is 10,000. So if you are applying for three positions, the maximum amount would be 30,000, for instance. Um, the supervisor who would be reviewing our role would only be available three days a week. That would allow 24 hours of work per week. Um, would this mean we would be, no, it doesn't. Would this mean we would be less likely to receive funding? No, as long as there is a supervisor available, we don't expect a supervisor to supervise the student or intern 100% of the time, but there should be somebody, they shouldn't be alone um, at the organization. We wanna make sure that they do have some sort of support. Um, but yes, definitely you, they don't have to be on site like seven days a week um, to be there 100% of the time that the intern or student are working, but they should be there to provide support as needed and there should be a plan. Um, so when they do, when they are working together, that, that there should be time for them to meet and review their work. Um, can you save your answers once you start the application? Um, and you can, yes, I, I don't recommend it. I mean, you can though, for sure. Yes. You can save your answer. Um, you, it would just show as an incomplete, um, application and then you can go back and complete it if you save each time. So yes. Um, would an artist run center be uh, with an archive be eligible? Yes, we do have, we do fund artist run centers. Um, and if you have an archive, if you have a collection, uh, then there should definitely be no issues. But through the Building Careers and Heritage stream, we do fund artist run centers and um, some organizations that don't have a permanent collection. Um, I'm so sorry. So someone said some acronyms I'm not aware of. Can they be said in full? Um, I'm not sure which ones that would be. Delivery organization is DO, Young Canada Works, YCW, CMA, Canadian Museums Association. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to email me if, um, if none of those were the correct ones. So my email will be ycw at museums.ca. Um, for the six-month internship, can it be a recent graduate or do they still have to be enrolled? So for the internship, um, they need to have graduated already. They can be enrolled in a program, but they just, for building careers and heritage, they need to be graduated, but they can definitely be in a program currently. Um, Sorry, I just saw on. Our organization has previously submitted a YCW application um, under a previous volunteer member. What information do I need to access our organization profile so I don't have to recreate it? Um, so if you have the person's email address, you can also email me because I, we do, uh, help people with this because we can see, we can impersonate you and see what the email address is. So if you would like to email me with the question on that, um, but you would just need, if you have their email or the email address that was used to log in, you can update as long as you have access to that email address, you can update the password yourself. Um, but let me know if you do need any help with that. I can definitely help. Um, oh, thank you, Karen. Have a good rest of your day. Uh, so would travel for a blind worker would require use of a taxi be covered for accessibility? Yes, I think that that would be an excellent example. If anyone um, with a disability needs extra assistance in getting to and from work, then yes, that that would that would be an example of um <clears throat> of an accessibility. A uh, thing that could be reimbursed. Um, let's see. Sorry, our professional development costs for students, um, student membership to the CEA, 
CMA, sorry, or a course covered by YCW, or is it the museum's responsibility to pay for this for the student? It is the museum's responsibility. So that is not covered um, by Young Canada Works. The only things that are covered um, up beyond accessibility and travel are the salary and the mandatory employer costs, which would be like uh, community pension plan, employment insurance, vacation, uh, health, for instance. So any of the other items in the budget are all covered by the museum or the organization rather than by YCW. For the o, uh, HO stream, what is a realistic date for notification or of, of approval? So that would be, uh, we do try to get them out in May. Uh, so starting in May, they just don't all go out in May or I should say April, sorry, uh, for a start of May. So April, um, April is a common one. It can be later though. It just depends on um, when we learn about our supplemental funding. But HO does have more positions. So they tend to have more, more offers go out than they would, for instance, for Building Careers and Heritage, which is a smaller program. Um, if you are a site that focuses on natural history, do you need to include a heavier cultural component to get funding? No, not at all. Um, natural history is cultural. Um, no, that natural history, same thing with aquariums or science centers, anything. Um, you you don't you don't need to to change anything or, yeah, no. Natural history is is definitely is fundable. Absolutely. Um, are there any stipulations on the student working from home a part of the time? No, there are not. They can do remote work. We, in fact, have a remote guideline on our website for suggestions on how to um, allow people or assist people with working from home or remotely, however they want to. Um, sorry, one a few more questions. I think, oh, we just have two more. Yes, that one we've answered. Can the student work virtually? Yes, they can. Um, how much detail should be provided in the line items of the budget, for instance, under orientation and supervision? Um, I anticipate there is another section of the application for a more detailed answer. Correct. Yes, that is correct. So on the budget, it is simply the amount. So we, for building careers and heritage, um, it would be, we estimate between $100 and $200 per, per, um, per week. So if it's 18 weeks, it would be 1,800 or 3,600, just depending. Um, but yes, yeah, so under supervision, um, there's a section in the actual application that would cover this and, and you can provide more details. Um, so it looks like that is all of the questions. I'm just gonna see if my chat works. I'm just gonna put in my email address one more time. Um, it does say that it worked for everyone. So hopefully you can see what I post. I'm so sorry that it didn't work for your ability to post chats, but um, I did not, I didn't know that. I will adjust that for next time. Um, but yes, feel free to email me with any more questions at ycw at museums.ca. And thank you everyone for coming. And I will try to send out uh, copies of the slides to everyone who needs them. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day.